Hi everyone. In this video, we will understand the performance testing lifecycle, and in which uh, we we will detail like how the performance testing activities are being done in the uh, project. So, uh, performance testing lifecycle typically have six phases: uh, the performance test requirement gathering, then planning, uh, then test design, test execution, and the performance test reporting, and at the end, the performance tuning. Okay. So the performance testing lifecycle typically starts with the performance test uh, requirement gathering, in which uh, the uh, performance testing requirements are identified and those are analyzed. So typically, uh, this will have the requirements like what is the response time that we are targeting, what is the error rate that we are targeting, what are the different tests that we want to do, and all these details we will have in this uh, requirement gathering uh, period. Okay. And once those requirements are identified and analyzed, they are documented in an NFR document. So that is the non-functional requirement document. And uh, after the uh, documentation, the NFR document or the non-functional requirement document is signed off by client and the business people. Right. So this is uh, the purpose of the requirements gathering phase. And typically in uh, in your performance testing or in your project. Uh, let's say client wants to do the performance testing. Uh, so let's say they have a website and they notice that the uh, web application performance is poor. So they decide to do the performance testing and they will approach your uh, stakeholders that hey we want to do the performance testing because our application performance is not good. So stakeholders will agree to that and they will approach the performance test team. Right, so they will uh, tell the performance test team that uh, we want to do the performance testing, and after that, the test manager or the performance test lead will conduct the meeting with stakeholders and client to understand the uh, pain points of the application, like how application is behaving in terms of performance. So they will understand all the uh, different aspects of the application. Uh, what is the uh, performance requirement that client have? what are the issues or what are the components that client is facing the performance issues on so they will understand all these details and then they will uh, gather the requirements based on the uh, review right so after all these requirements are captured uh, the uh, the requirements are documented okay uh, so this is these are this is the example of uh, typical nfrs or the non functional requirements of an e-commerce website so in your project, you will uh, typically get this kind of requirements. And uh, in, in this, uh, they have uh, different uh, requirements like the response time. Uh, also, they can have uh, requirements such as the error rate or the uh, server utilization. Right. So response time in terms of like the browse pages should not take more than two seconds. The search pages should not take more than three seconds and, uh, and all of this. Right, and uh, there are some. There can be some requirements on the error rate as well, like when the test is running, the error should not be more than two percent of your overall test. There can also be a requirement of the uh, CPU and memory utilization of the application server. So you will get the uh, requirements such as the server CPU utilization should not exceed seventy percent, and the memory utilization should not exceed sixty percent. Right. So typically, these are the non-functional requirements uh, that uh, the client will have for the uh, performance testing, and they will optionally have details like some of the on some of the days they were they are receiving more traffic, and uh, based on that, we need to do the performance testing as well, like to uh, to accommodate such kind of scenarios as well. Okay, so these are uh, some of the typical uh, non-functional requirements that you may get for the performance testing. And these are uh, identified and documented in the documented in the uh, requirement gathering phase. Uh, so there are certain challenges involved in this phase. Like uh, client will not typically have the uh, the thorough requirements. The requirement that they will come up with will be uh, more or less vague. Uh, like you know, we want to do the performance testing, but we are not sure which flows we want to target, uh, which are the pages that we want to performance test. What is the expected response time that we want to target? So clients typically will not have all these details. So they will come with the vague requirements. So what you as a performance tester will have to do is you will have to ask uh, relevant questions, right? To 
get as much details from the client as possible or you may have to go through the historical usage patterns so let's say client has the uh, analytics available so you have, you will have to go through that and will uh, will uh, based on that reference you will have to prepare your performance requirements and let's say if you have uh, no historical usage patterns available let's say no analytics or any other detail available then you will have to uh, use this step up approach so the step up approach is nothing but you will start with 100 users load then you run the test for some duration then you uh, uh, increase the load to 200 users then you run for some duration then 300 and all uh, like this type of approach you will have to follow in your performance testing and one of the challenges the lot of coordination be uh, between different teams are required because typically a software project will have a lot of components right one of uh, let's say a database server an application server a web server there will be different team designing uh, all these components so there will be a lot of con coordination required uh, between the different teams so this is these are some of the challenges in the uh, requirement performance requirement gathering phases right so we have uh, identified the requirements we have documented them so what we'll have to do is the next step is to do the performance test planning all right based on the requirements that we have received we have to define a performance uh, test strategy and we will have to plan the activities accordingly right so in this phase a detailed performance test strategy and plan is prepared and those are captured in the performance test plan document right so uh, based on this test strategy and plan the performance test plan is prepared and that is signed up by the client and the business people so this is typically the approach of uh, the uh, the planning phase so uh, overall performance testing activities are planned in this phase like uh, how when will we start uh, what are the tests that we are going to run what if we want to uh, log an issue uh, so all these details are uh, planned in this particular phase so uh, it is typically done by the uh, test manager or the test lead and uh, all these uh, details will be captured in the performance test plan so the test plan will have a details such as the performance test scope like what are the test uh, scenarios that we want to target the entry and exit criteria the tooling and resourcing requirements like tooling such as which tool we want to use such as load runner or jmeter or you know wave load or such such tool and uh, we will also have to identify the resourcing requirement like um, how many resources are required uh, to do the performance testing like how the test environment will have uh, the test environment and test data uh, the test execution strategy so all this detail will be captured in the performance test plan okay and uh, once the test plan is prepared it will be reviewed and approached by the project team so this is typically what happens in the planning phase and uh, you have the requirements you have done all the planning so what is the next step is the performance test design right so based on the plan that is available uh, the test team will have to prepare the performance test scripts right and uh, those test scripts will then be validated and uh, they will be reviewed uh, by the test performance test lead or the test manager right so this is the approach so performance test uh, scripts are typically prepared by the performance testers uh, what they do is they go through all the scenarios that are documented in the performance test plan and uh, then they will start preparing the uh, performance test script and uh, Majority of the performance test tool will have a recording feature. So they will start with recording the test scripts. Uh, they will, you know, record the test steps that uh, we want to performance test on. And uh, the recording will provide, uh, you know, skeleton of a script. And then you will have to enhance this that script by adding some uh, custom logic or the think time or the assertions and etc. Okay. Uh, so as to, you know, simulate the real world scenarios for the performance testing and then uh, the once that uh, enhanced uh, script is prepared you will have to validate that and uh, then we and if you notice any issues then you have to debug that script uh, if they are not working as expected okay and once all the steps are performed uh, the your test is test script is prepared and they will need to be reviewed and verified by the test manager or the test lead uh, some of the challenges that are involved in this uh, phase is 
we may not have the performance test environment readily available so what you will have to do is you have to create a reusable kind of kind of a script on different environment let's say you want to do the performance uh, sorry performance testing on the uh, let's say performance test environment but you don't have that environment available so what you can do is you can uh, you know kind of create a script on the QA environment and then make it reusable for the performance test environment when it is available right so uh, try to make this script reusable and validate the script on the performance test environment uh, you may also not have some third party services or uh, required apis when you uh, when you are preparing the performance testing scripts so in that case what you can do is you can uh, mock some of uh, those apis or the third party services or you can do the service virtualization of all the apis right so these are some of the challenges faced during the test script preparation phase and once the test scripts are prepared we will have the uh, we will have to execute those test, uh, scripts on the, the performance test environment that is to run the performance tests okay so in this execution phase we typically run the performance test and when the tests are running we analyze the performance test results and uh, if we notice that we are uh, facing any issues any performance issues then we will have to raise any uh, performance bottleneck or the performance defect okay uh, so typically uh, this this thing happens the performance testers run the scripts on to the application and these are done using the load generators so load generators are nothing but a physical or a virtual machines from where you generate the load on the application using the test script that you have prepared okay and uh, while you are applying the load on the application using this tool uh, you will have to monitor different graphs and metrics while the test is running right so you may have to monitor let's say what is the uh, response time that we are noticing what are the errors that we are getting uh, what is the cpu utilization of the application what is the memory utilization of the application so all these graphs and metrics you will have to monitor while the test is running and uh, like i said we also monitor the application resource usage and uh, once the test is run you will have to uh, you may have to remove the uh, junk records which are created during the performance test and uh, then we'll have to compare the uh, matrix uh, of the test run against the test plan and if you notice that the matrix doesn't match like the expected response time is more than what is expected then we can raise a defect and uh, we can raise a defect in case any performance bottleneck is found and then we perform the root cause analysis like if we notice any performance issues then we will have to uh, identify any root cause uh, like why that performance issue is noticed during the performance test run okay and that will involve uh, participation from different team members like the database team or the uh, the development team so all this act activity will be done in the performance test execution part so we have uh, run the performance test so the final step is to prepare a performance uh, test report so based on what whatever findings that we have based on the uh, performance test run we will prepare a final test report that will provide a go no go decision and uh, it will also provide the performance uh, rec recommendation and will bring an attention to any performance related risk okay so let's say you come across any performance issues which affects you know the database server so you can recommend some steps to uh, mitigate those uh, in your uh, performance uh, test report so you are basically providing a recommendation and bring an attention to any performance related risks so typical approach of this is to uh, prepare a test report the final test report by uh, test manager or test lead and uh, they take the help of performance tester to prepare those reports and it will uh, contain the, the test report will contain the uh, all the nfrs which are made in the performance testing if you notice any issues in the performance testing all the risks and the recommendation to improve the application performance so the uh, final test report document will have all this uh, these details okay and that report is then presented to the stakeholders and or client and uh, it will uh, serve as a go no go decision purpose 
right? So this is the test reporting part. And uh, based on whatever uh, reporting that we have prepared, the performance tuning will be carried out. So performance tuning is nothing but, uh, you know, uh, preparing your application or, uh, or tune your application to based on the recommendation that is received during the performance testing. Okay. So the performance tuning may be carried out on the application based on the recommendation. So this tuning can be, let's say you are noticing that your CPU utilization is 90%. Uh, so you may uh, increase the number of CPUs or your uh, number of uh, like the amount of RAM in your application, or you may notice any coding issues. So uh, you, your developer team need to uh, you know, fine tune your code. So all this performance tuning will be carried out in this particular phase. Uh, this performance tuning can be application specific or the infra specific. So like I said, if any coding issue is noticed, then uh, that can be application specific. So that needs to be fixed. And let's say there is any uh, infra specific issue like your uh, RAM is not sufficient, your CPU is not sufficient for your uh, application or your database server. So those infra specific uh, performance tuning need to be carried out. And uh, after the performance tuning, if required, the performance tests are uh, run again to check if there is an improvement in the performance. So after the performance tuning is done, the performance uh, tests are run again to check if uh, the tuning that has been done is effective or not. Right. So all these steps are uh, done in the performance tuning of your lifecycle. OK, so this is the performance testing lifecycle. It will have uh, six phases, the requirement gathering, planning, test designing, test execution, uh, test reporting, and the performance tuning.